Bible declares that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're going to take a look at the book of the Acts of the Apostles in this video, and we're just going to go through it, not doctrinally, we're not going to deal with doctrine today, but we're going to deal with the events that took place in the time of the Apostles. The book of the Acts of the Apostles covers a period approximately 35 years, and it, and it records events that took place in the whole known world of that time. So what I'm going to do is talk to you about the last 35 years and what is happening in the whole known world today. There are many things happening that I have not seen, but I have seen some of these things happening. And I want to call some of them to your attention. And the purpose of this is to inspire your faith. God desires to perform miracles today. And his latter church is going to be greater, more powerful, bigger, cover more area, and uh, reach more people than the early church did. The Bible teaches us that, and people are beginning to believe it among those that are filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized, endeavoring to do the will of God, are really grasping a hold of this concept, and we're beginning to reach out in faith to take a hold of this. And I just want to further inspire your faith in this direction. In the book of Joel, the prophecy is made. In chapter 2, the apostle Peter referred to this chapter on the day of Pentecost. I don't know if he was reading it or quoting it, but uh, nevertheless, there was words from the second chapter of the book of Joel spoken on the day of Pentecost. I want to back up from where he was talking just a few verses and read this for you. In verse 21, chapter 2 of the book of Joel, it says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Verse 23. Be glad then ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you the former rain. That's speaking of the events that's recorded in the Acts of the Apostles. The former rain. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. The key word here is moderately. Compared to what? He tells us further in this verse as to what he is comparing to. He will give you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. So when uh, Joel is prophesying under the anointing of the Lord that the former rain would be uh, moderate compared to the latter rain, he was talking about what is going to happen at the time of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ being greater than it was even in the time of the apostles? That's been hard for us to believe, but we've been trying to believe it because it's in the word of the Lord, and we have to believe God's word even though we may not understand it. But it's getting so easy to believe now because with our own eyes we have seen things that is even greater than happened in the Acts of the Apostles. Verse 25, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. You be sure that everything that is happening is under the control of the Lord. Nothing has happened, including the great falling away that was not demanded and called for by the power of God. Amen. Amen. And as I look at the book of the Acts of the Apostles, I get very excited. And my heart cries out, Lord, do it all over again. Do it for us again. And we are seeing that happen today. Praise the Lord. Other prophets have spoke of it as well. I read for you in the book of Haggai beginning uh, with the uh, third verse. Who is left among you 
that saw the house in his first glory. And how do you see it now? This is Haggai talking about the rebuilding of the temple. And we're in chapter 2, verse 3. Uh, how is it in your own eyes? Comparison of it as nothing. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, son of jo Jostek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am, I am the Lord, and, and work, for I am with you, uh, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I uh, convened with you when you came out of Egypt, so that my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations. And the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, say the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Speaking of the temples that was built in, uh, in the Old Testament being comparable to what was going to happen in the New Testament. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost and in the days and years to follow under the ministry of the apostles. But he has promised to us that the latter reign or the latter house will be even greater. Jesus himself made this statement. In the 14th chapter of John and verse 12, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater work than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. If we can just grasp a hold of these things, Satan wants to steal them away from us. He wants to fill our hearts and minds with doubt and fear. But if we can somehow fill our hearts and minds with faith and take a hold of these things and believe them, then, then uh, God will be able to perform. Something wonderful happened to me. It wasn't very wonderful at the moment when it was happening, but it later became a great blessing to me. The Lord just kind of reached out into the mission field and grabbed me by the uh, throat almost and by the, by the back of my neck and shirt and just snatched me out of great revival. The last year that I was traveling as an evangelist officially appointed, I seen over 4,000 people receive the Holy Ghost in those meetings. And he snatched me back to my own home state of West Virginia and sent me to Wheeling, West Virginia. And I really believe God sent me there and to just to do something in my spirit and heart and mind and see if indeed I was obedient to the voice of God. I felt that it was the will of the Lord for me to go there and to establish a church. There was a little handful of saints, seven in fact, that was already baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, gathering there when I went to Wheeling. They didn't like me very well. In fact, in fact, when they had a business meeting to vote whether they wanted me as their pastor or not, I only got two votes. <laughs> and the other five abstained. <laughs> but it didn't make any difference. I told them, I called them on the phone, I said, you completely missed God, I'm coming anyhow. And I did. And. Uh, they didn't stay with me very long. They, uh, they kind of figured me out before I came, and I guess that's the reason they voted the way they did. But anyhow, we went to Wheeling, West Virginia, and God began to pour out His Spirit in that place. It wasn't long until, it was only a few months until we had 100 people filled with the Holy Ghost, just a few months. And, uh, and then there was about 20 people moved in to, to be with me and to help me which was a great, great blessing. Brother Lee Stone King came, and just in uh, 